Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Every once in a while I come across some hardware or software that solves a problem for me. And whenever I come across one of these things, I always like to share it with you. And today I am sharing something that I found the other day called Vibe. And this is an on-device transcription utility that will take an audio file or a video file and convert whatever is spoken in that file into text that you can format in a bunch of different ways. It is pretty simple to use. It runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux, so it is cross-platform, and it's also open source, both the software and the engine that it's using to do the transcription. This is using OpenAI's open source Whisper engine to do the transcription. And what I like about this is that it's really easy to use and is cross-platform. So I thought I would give you a quick overview of this and show you what it's all about. And before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is an open source project, so I downloaded it for free, as you can as well. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what Vibe is all about. Now for the demonstration file today, we're going to use this interview that I did with Tom Persky of floppydisk.com the other day. Tom is the last major reseller of floppy disks, and it was a really fun discussion. So if you haven't checked out that video, definitely give it a look. And so it runs about 14 minutes or so. And what I'm gonna do here is go over to Vibe and just select the interview here and start transcribing it. It'll work with a number of different languages here, as you can see. It will not translate, though, out of English into something else. It can translate into English, but not out of English. So you'll have to take the file elsewhere to do it, but it can recognize a number of different languages. So what I'm gonna do here is just click transcribe and we'll look at all the options here uh, a little bit later as we work our way through the app. And that's pretty much it to get going. And I think in most cases, this is all you need to do. I will show you what this menu does here in a minute as well. And so by default, it's just going to create a big blob of text based on whatever you gave it. And I'm running this on my MacBook Air M2, but you can see it is plowing through this 14 minute file pretty quickly here. So I'm gonna let this thing do its thing. And when it is done, which should be maybe another two minutes or so, uh, we'll come back and see what the output looks like. All right, we are all done. So let's take a look and see what it did here. And you can see what the text is looking like. I have found that it is very, very accurate, especially when people aren't talking over each other. I did find it struggles a little bit with sometimes my young children talking, but generally it does a great job, uh, sometimes better than what you might get through YouTube's automated captions. And you, you can see right now we've got it set on the text option here. I'm just gonna zoom out and give you a little bit more screen real estate here. And if we go over to this pull down menu, there's a few different formatting options. So for example, I can have it format in HTML here and it will drop in text based on timestamps, and there are some adjustments you can make for that, which I'll show you in a few minutes. You can also have it output a PDF. One thing that's really cool is that it will do SRT files. So you could drop this into Plex, for example, and have it show up as a closed caption. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that some of the text here is bunched up quite a bit, especially in the first 30 seconds, and there are some adjustments we can make to make that a little bit easier. So I found the SRT can be a little tricky to get right because you don't want to have too much text per caption and you want to make sure that the captions are also up on screen long enough. So it struggles at the beginning and then it usually settles back down here. So you could probably make a few adjustments there to fix that. Uh, you also have VTT and JSON as well. So a lot of different output options here. Now, if I select HTML, for example, and click on Save Transcript, it will save that in a web page style format here. So if I double click on it and pull my browser up, you can see uh, what that looks like there. And likewise, all the other formats will give you a similar file at the end of the process. And that's pretty much what it does. It's not all that uh, feature rich just yet, but it is very helpful, I think, if you want a quick and dirty transcription with timestamps attached to it. Now let's take a look and see if we can get that SRT looking a little less bunched up at the beginning. So if I jump back over here and go to more options, what I'm finding is that if I enable this option here, the timestamps per each word, and then have the maximum sentence length at like 55, uh, that will usually fix the problem. The problem though is that I have to rerun the transcription after making that adjustment there. 
One other thing you can do, by the way, is put some words that are commonly heard in your text, and that will improve sometimes names and other things that it might get wrong. But we're just going to leave that off for now. So why don't we transcribe this again? It'll take another minute or two. And when it's done, we should have a better formatted SRT file. We'll be right back. All right, so this is looking a lot better now. As you can see, our captions are a lot shorter. They're staying on for about three or four seconds each, and it all looks pretty good here. I did try this with Plex a little bit earlier, and everything synced up properly. So this is a really good, quick and dirty way to generate your own SRT transcriptions. Now, although Vibe doesn't do any kind of additional work on the file after it transcribes it, you can, of course, take that data elsewhere. So, for example, I saved out the text version of the transcription here, and I fed it over to Gemini, and I asked it to read the file and present all of the questions and answers, and it was able to do a pretty good summary of the interview that we had. So you can use this along with other tools to speed up your workflow or perhaps query uh, the results of a very long meeting if you don't want to sit through and listen to the whole file. So there are some real cool use cases, I think, for this. Now, this is a super simple application to use. You don't have to do anything after you install it to get it working. It pulls down the AI model it's going to use for the transcription automatically in the background. So you can just get up and running immediately. But if you do want to have some flexibility insofar as what model it is using for its transcription, you can jump over to the settings here. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see the ability to customize things. So the model that it works with by default is this one called ggml-medium.bin. But if you wanted to find more models, you can click on this link right here, and that'll pull up this uh, page on GitHub where they've got a few other models you can choose from here that have been tested to work with Vibe. And then you can play with additional ones by clicking on this link here. So if you're not getting good results, you can try a few different models and see which one works best for your particular situation. I've been having great luck here with the one it came with, so that's what I've been using. If you go over to the folder option here, you can see that this model, the default one, takes up about a gigabyte and a half on your hard drive when you install everything. And again, this all installs automatically. You never have to go into the screen if you don't want to. And that's one of the things I like about it is that it's so easy to get up and running for people that don't have a lot of experience with all of these different AI models. So that's it. It's pretty much the minimally viable product at the moment. And part of why I want to do this video is that this is such a great start and so simple. It would be great to see more people start using this and contributing to the product to give it some more options. So for example, I would love to have it discern speakers uh, that it's hearing in the interviews, for example. And I'm sure a lot of other features would be great to add as well. And what's great is that this is open source. It is multi-platform. It runs on your device. So everything you're doing here doesn't go to the cloud. You can disconnect your computer from the internet completely, and it'll run just as well as you saw here. So a great start. It's called Vibe. And if you have transcriptions to do, this is definitely worth checking out. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.